So hi, my name is Wolfgang Hankeln and I'm sitting here with Frank-Oliver Glöckner, who is the head of the Microbial Genomics and Bioinformatics Group at the MPI Bremen and also the host of this EU-US short course. And first of all, um, so how are your first impressions? This is now the middle of the second week and how is the course going? There was also a task force meeting. So did every, everything went fine so far? Well, we are very satisfied. I hope that also the participants are, but the first impression I got is that they're really happy about the course. Um, we will have the evaluation on the last day, so this will be our benchmark then. <laughs> but uh, so far it went quite well. We had really exciting talks, uh, fantastic tutorials, also thanks to the tutors in that case. <laughs> and um, we had a nice uh, excursion or trip on Saturday to the island Langeoog. And um, I had the feeling they really enjoyed staying here in, in Bremen on campus and at the Jacobs University, which has, I would say, rather good facilities for uh, be having these over no, 30 people on, on campus, yeah. where they have the possibility even to sleep and stay here, have all their meals here, and so really work as a group over the whole two weeks. Um, additionally, we have now found out that the facilities in terms of PC lab and also lecture halls work quite well. I was even impressed. It's the first time they would really do this with 30 people. We were a bit scared about overloading the system, but so far everything works quite nicely and um, no problems that I can foresee for the last days that we are still here. <laughs> So you are the main host of this short course and uh, when did the I idea of this short course um, came up and how was the organization? So the original idea came up about uh, two or even three years ago um, and this is based on the meeting of the EU-US task force that uh, regularly meets I would say all two to three years in that time at Washington where the recommendation for having a bioinformatic course uh, was made and then it took about yeah, two years uh, to get the organization and, and the financing mostly done because this is a co-financing between the European Commission and the National Science Foundation on, and NOAA and for sure um, it took a while that all the formal administrative stuff was there. So we developed a program, how it could look like, so for two weeks we presented this to the officers, to the respective people that in the administration that are responsible for this and then finally it got approved um, from the EU side first and also from the NSF and we were really happy that we can go on with the organization and really do this there. So yeah, it was a process of I would say two years to develop it. Wow. And uh, what, when did the selection process for the participants start and what were the criteria to select for the students? So the uh, application phase started in December last year and so they had time then to hand in the application and they had to write even why they want to be part of the course, what is the personal benefit from this and for sure also how is the dissemination because we also expect from the participants that they will disseminate this information again here to their groups, their communities and after all the um, applications came in, I guess it was in January, then we, we, it was 142 in total <coughs> and uh, we only could officially take 24 at the beginning, but then it turned out that um, three or six in total has, want, even want to come without any additional support, any financial support, so we came up with 30 people and so we selected them based on their, their plans, so the urgency, how how they need this kind of work, but for sure also about diversity so that we have representatives from most of the European countries but also in the US side that we have a diversity. So not to take two or three from one university and then nothing from another one. So I'd really like to be uh, yeah, comprehensive in this case and also for sure in terms of uh, gender we try to have a balance between females and males <laughs> so that we have really a, a balanced and nice course. And additionally, or even maybe most important, also the skill level should be on an on a equal level. So we, we cut out the absolute beginners, to be honest, and we cut out the absolute freaks <laughs> so that we have a, a bit of homogeneous set of people that we can train here. And I think it was good and uh, it, it worked out quite well as far as I can see at the moment. <laughs> So your impression is quite good uh, working with the participants and um, you, you think you selected for the right people? Yeah, they are absolutely motivated. So it's really, really fascinating how motivated they are. Even 
in the evening lecture, which is between seven and, uh, and eight, or officially they, they, they torture the, <laughs> um, the, uh, the speakers with questions half an hour, 45 minutes that we had there. So I thought they get tired at a certain point of time, but they still use this opportunity to really get in touch with all the people, uh, do the networking by themselves between the different groups. And this is also one of the important part of this uh, course. The overseas, the, let's say the European, but also overseas interaction between the participants really build a network with the speakers, with the tutors, with each other. So they act like a cohort maybe in the, in the future. And uh, most of them have also, I forgot to mention, have been uh, selected because of early career scientists. So they really are emerging and then they might use this network for their developing their career even, even better in the future. So I'm really impressed about the motivation of these of the people. And um, how's your impression? Do you really think you could um, like give them a kickstart in bioinformatics? Because two weeks is um, is some time, but it's a rather sh a short time to, uh, for complex tools in bioinformatics. What is your impression? How did they uh, pick up the knowledge, and uh, what do they take home? And are there plans also for a follow-up shop course? Maybe. Yeah. So definitely, I think they get a got kickstart, um, they see what the tools can do, they feel the power of bioinformatics, but definitely it's like learning to drive a car. After you have a driving license, you cannot drive the car, you need the experience, you need to, to, to work with this system. And there is ideas about follow-up, for sure it will be again a question of financing, uh, but it's already, let's say, indications that there will be a program um, a matching program between NSF and so between US and EU of uh, short-term fellowships so they can exchange, the participants can apply for exchange programs so they can visit the other labs so they get in contact and stay in contact with each other and even with other labs that have done the teaching here. So it's not finally decided but I got an indication from the US task force already and we are currently collecting, especially in the evaluation on Friday and the discussion on Friday, what kind of modules would be interesting for the future. And I heard already programming, R, um, annotation, assembly. So there is modules that need time because at the moment we just maybe had them an hour or two, which is not enough really to, to really understand what's going on there. So this might be future modules or there might be models for future uh, courses that are planned and um, if everything went well it might be another one next year in the US um, but still this needs to be decided um, on, on the level of the EUS task force if they are able to finance that. So as you mentioned this has been a joint effort, an EU, uh, US effort and my question is um, how's your impression from the organizational side? Um, how was the collaboration between the EU and the US? Well, very good. So, and uh, I'm, I really was happy also to have the EUS task force members on on campus here uh, on Thursday last week. So, I got the first feedback from Gabini, which is the executive secretary of the US um, task force, and she said she was really impressed about the facilities. She was impressed about what was ongoing here, about participants, about the course itself. So I think we, we left a very good impression on them and uh, they're really working nicely together. Um, they had their internal meeting on Friday and were discussing about how to go on with the US um, yeah, collaboration and I think it's very worthwhile to have this kind of, let's say, alignment between the uh, United States and the European Commission so that we have matching opportunities for funding and, and coherent programs uh, across the big pond. So. And uh, last week there was also this task force meeting. Um, so uh, just to give the listeners an idea, what's the vision? What what is the aim for this collaboration? And what kind of decisions are, are made there in order to make this whole thing successful? Mm. So the the US task force itself is um, uh, let's say um, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a group of people that think about what is ongoing in the future in terms of uh, what is the hot topics for the future on the EU and the US side. And so they are at the moment working towards the next framework program. So the EU funding goes in the framework programs and the next framework program is, is called the Horizon 2020. So we're all working towards Horizon 2020. 
and for sure they are picking up impressions. What, is, uh, what kind of topics should be funded, what is emerging, where, what we should come up with. And they are the task for biotechnology, for sure they are very interested in the applied parts also of all these things. And these people are from diverse, uh, uh, they have a diverse backgrounds. So they have from agriculture, from health, from let's say environment. And so they come together and think about what do we have in common, what do we need in the future. And this is done in collaboration with the American part, so they have then they don't have framework programs, but for sure the NSF has also their calls so that they have the possibility to really bring these information together and have a, let's say, a coherent information or coherent calls for the future. So um, that's, that's rather important because it directly influences what we are most probably doing in the future. <laughs> and, and I was very happy that bioinformatics was um, picked up and seen as one of the important parts also for the future and future funding for sure. And um, well, with 142 applications um, within well, eight weeks or something, you see there is a demand for that. So, and this was also brought to the attention to the task force. So, so maybe one final question. Uh, can you maybe say it in a few sentences? Why is it now the time to organize these kind of short courses and workshops for bioinformatics? Well, I think the, the time is because the, the raising data that we have, so we have the next generation data uh, production systems, so sequencing technologies that came up in 2005. And now it's really uh, data production in terms of sequence production is, you can do it so easily in this such a small amount of money that everybody does it. And for sure the problem is not the data production anymore as it was in former times, but the problem is now how to analyze the data, how to make sense out of the data, how to bring these data into biological knowledge or transfer them into biological knowledge. And therefore the pressure on the individual scientists to deal with the data and be able to deal with the data is, is very, very high. And so they want to do their science, but they need to, do, to, to use the tools. And so we, I think the time was just perfect um, to get this done here now because at least for these 30 participants we could give them a kickstart and they learn about databases, tools, technologies and this week about specific tools they can use in their daily work and even if they just get an impression how it works they can dig now deeper and understand how to deal with it. And I think that the time is really perfect and but still there's a lot of people outside that need that so we should consider repeating it. But we will also, beside this course, uh, we have the uh, MicroB3 project, which is a European project, large-scale integrated project, and there we also offer um, bioinformatic courses in the future. There's one planned in autumn, right? Exactly, there's one planned in autumn, there's uh, in October already one planned, and um, so we are currently the applications out since a week. We have already about three or four applications, so we'll see the deadline is 15 of July, so I guess we will also have quite a lot of applications there. And so we're trying to do this training, well, on the two weeks um, issue, this is, this is a big event, I would say, but also on the weekly issue, and then maybe continue with these kind of trainings in the future, because the need is there because of the raising data that is coming everywhere at the moment. All right, so thanks a lot for answering all the questions patiently. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot for this really nice interview. I appreciate it that you be here. <laughs> okay.